Kids Show. Yes. Ethan, are you cut off this time? You're supposed to sing like Hugh Jackman. You're cut no. off. Greatest Showman. What is, what is that? The Greatest Showman. You don't do musicals. That's how you're supposed to open this. You're supposed to be singing. <laughs> no? no? No. I don't I do not do musicals. <laughs> no. Hugh who? Hugh who? Hugh who? Hugh who? All right, guys. Welcome back to part three for this week, uh, where we have... Uh, me and her that you know, the pros, and then our friends, the average Joes. The city slickers. You guys might know from part one and two. Yeah. Absolutely. If this is your first time to the channel and you are just lucky enough to find part three of this week's Yawa, click the subscribe button anyway, and then search around to find the other two parts. Okay, we're going to get this started from Washington Hunting Newbie. In the past, y'all have said that you have made mistakes in your training. What are some of those mistakes, and how have you corrected those training items? I'm gonna um, have to. Dog. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to to start. Well, this, this is one definitely off. a question just for Laura and Tyler. <laughs> I mean, we're professionals. You don't make okay. mistakes. Everybody, everybody gets one mistake. We'll go down the list, starting with Tyler. Average Tyler. My one mistake. <laughs> God, just um, Laura's just just one. <laughs> <laughs> just one mistake. Uh, I would say getting another dog too early. We love our two dogs. But Did we get another dog too early? <laughs> one and so a half. It would have been nice to have a, a, another. Think this was a mistake. It would have been nice to have another year so or a year the, and a half. What's the age difference between your two dogs? Year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. So it would have been nice to have another year or another year and a half, like a three-year-old dog introduced with a puppy Ellie would have left us if she had been older when we got a second dog. <laughs> <laughs> she would have given you guys up for adoption. Yes, that what you're probably. I, I definitely think that you've got some valid information there, especially we hear a lot of people that are trying to stack puppies on top of each yeah. other. You However, know, six, I do eight, think it's months. interesting that in the same family, we have two op differing yeah. opinions on that as well. Um, you both agree that probably a six-month-old puppy oh, and then a yeah. brand-new puppy wouldn't be a great idea. Yes. Um, but it sounds like Laura's okay with the fact that they're a year and a half apart, but Tyler would have been okay with even three years apart. So. Yeah, just that extra year to develop Ellie, uh, yeah. the skills that we would want her to have. Giving her more Giving her 100% of our attention to those, where now she's getting 50%. And so we have to and that's do valid. twice as much work because we're only giving 50% of the, the attention to that work. Um, but mistake-wise for me isn't, training because I can't, I really can't narrow it down to just one, just because we've learned so much from, especially it's, I, I, we don't have kids yet, but like probably your first kid, you know, you did all these things with the first kid, you're like, we're not doing that next time, but um, <laughs> is in selecting uh, our first dog. Uh, so Tyler knew he wanted a German short hair, had never had a dog growing up, I think had got on one of those uh, gun dog forum pages yep. and was going through litters of puppies and we're from here in Kansas, and we found one about a couple of hours away. So we we picked our first dog on color, uh, and we wanted a female. So, I, so did I. Uh, yeah. I mean. So we went, uh, we picked her up. Um, we had picked her prior to going uh, and picked her up. Didn't really have a whole lot of questions we knew to ask uh, the breeder and uh, what to look for, or is this the personality that we want? Fortunately, we were young. We had uh, time for activity and didn't have another dog uh, because she took a lot of energy. So I'd say um, not knowing what to do or what to research and just kind of jumping in, it's been fine now, but she was tough for the first year. Those are both really good, valid things because like Tyler said, it's hard to divide your time yes. between dogs, especially if it's not something you're doing full time. Like right. we have a little more time, but even us, I don't want puppies stacked on top of puppies if at all possible because I want the time necessary to take each of those puppies and develop them and get them to the point where they're ready for less, right. and then I can start a new puppy. Yeah. Absolutely. And then what Laura's saying, too, like knowing what you should be asking and what you should be looking for is is really important so that you get the right dog. And you guys lucked out. I mean, Ellie's a nice dog. Oh, yeah. She's crazy smart, which is, you know, you think, oh, a well, I want thing. a really smart dog. Meh. Not you do level. and you no. don't because she can <laughs> escape almost any crate. Yeah. Jumps out of the fence, jumps out of the kennel runs when she comes here to board and to train. So uh, 
She is very intelligent. Yeah. We have never put her in an enclosure she hasn't been able to get out of. Even a rough land crate, she yes. busted the door out of that, split it in half, and she got herself out. So have uh, you have you tried a lucky kennel? Uh, no, no, those no. lock. We haven't. No. Yeah, those actually we lock. Might, we might have to hook you up she with one of those. Break her teeth they like lock? she did on her first kennel. Yeah. yeah, she's she's tough on herself. So okay, Ethan. No, 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 no. In order. <laughs> Your turn. Dang it. I was trying to get out of this one. Um, my biggest mistake was probably... Marrying Ethan. <laughs> no. No. Uh, my biggest mistake was probably being um, one of those... <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Um, slightly poor time. I had to remember which button was which. <laughs> Um, getting back to my mistake, uh, was probably feeling like I had to use vibrate for my dog when I'm working on more advanced things. Uh, we were to the point now that we weren't using negative reinforcement. I was to the point where I was using positive punishment and I was probably using the collar a little bit incorrectly. Uh, that's where the beeper collar story comes in. Um, and I basically would use the vibrate in a situation instead of stimulation because I wanted to be nice to my dog. He was my buddy, he was my friend, and I felt bad. Well, that was just setting him up for failure. Um, and he just kept making mistakes and making mistakes and making mistakes because I was making mistakes in handling and Ethan was recognizing that I was making the mistakes in handling. Um, my first dog and my first dog that I was taking to advanced levels and he said, okay, no more mistakes. This is how we're going to fix this. Um, and I switched from the 1820, which if you know what an 1820 H2O looks like, it's got a button on the side. That's, it's a DT Systems e-collar. Yes. Yep. Um, button on the side for vibrate. And then the 1850 is the exact same transmitter, but the button on the side is for the beeper on the <laughs> collar for locate. So we'd go out training and I'd put my beeper collar now on my dog and I had... Literally, I just was so conditioned. So conditioned. I, myself was so conditioned that I use vibrate on him to turn him. I use vibrate on him um, for things that I shouldn't be using vibrate on him for. And so we'd be running through a training situation, and I would need to make that correction, and I would hit the vibrate, which was actually now the beeper, and it would go beep, 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 beep. I'd go, and, gotcha. And stop using like, vibrate. Stop using vibrate. I'm like, oh, I got Perfect. caught. So exactly, I um, that allowed me to condition myself out of making those mistakes. It's um, also a, a very important lesson on how important timing is for fixing behaviors. Yeah, I mean that was a very the second you made the mistake, I was like, you went, ah, I made the mistake. I made the mistake. Yeah. Um, so using vibrate in the wrong situation because I thought I was being a friend to my dog um, and I didn't think that I wanted to use stimulation. And now after many dogs later and lots more advanced training and handling and successes, I realized that there is a time and place for stimulation um, as well as using that positive punishment side of training. So these have all been very good and I have to go last now. Um, you I would did say it to yourself. I tried to give you an out. I say, I would say that my biggest mistake is, especially in the past, and I would, I would go to say that I'm pretty good at not making this mistake now. Um, I still get caught every once in a while, but trying to move a dog faster than what they're ready for. Uh. I'm a, I'm a big fan of seeing a young dog get to go out and do things, and um, I wouldn't say that I push because push sounds bad, but I try and push. Um, for more sometimes than what a dog is ready for. And I did that a l more, like I said, way in the past. And now I'm and uh, much, much better. And definitely with our personal at, dogs because... Yeah, I'm like, all right, you can do more than this. Yeah. You're better than this. You can Let's go do this and this and this and this and this. And they may not be ready for all of those things. And it's something that I see a lot of people that are especially getting into their first dog or something. They're like so excited about this process and they want to do all the things. And then they overdo it. Then you have a dog that no longer enjoys training because you've put too much emphasis on it. It's just like anything. Um, and not anything necessarily that um, just that they don't enjoy training. Some dogs are just not mentally mature enough and ready for the more advanced training that you've tried to in the past move them through. So the training that you're doing with those dogs is literally the exact same training from 18 months and then you give it a break and you come back to that training at 24 months and you're like, wow, I changed nothing 
but let that dog get a little more mature. So and they're ready for that. Then. There's mental maturity involved in that. And then I would say the um, the other side of it is just doing too much all the way around. So Yeah, that overdoing it. Overdoing it. And that all depends on being able to read your dog. Now, this is something that um, we pride ourselves in, uh, especially with all of the experience and all of the exposure over the years, is our ability to read dogs and see what they're ready for, what the next step is, maybe what some minor mistakes that may be happening in your training sessions. And that's why we set up our Patreon community um, that gives you the ability to put videos of your training sessions onto the interwebs for us to watch and review. We take a look at them, we say, that looks awesome, this is where you should be headed, or hey, this is where you're struggling and this is why, and this is all you need to do to fix it. So it's going to really speed up your training process. All you got to do is go to patreon.com slash standing stone kennels and sign up there. Next question from Sharon Breaker from Facebook. Do you all miss the dogs you have in for training after they go home? So though you guys have your dogs, um, they actually were fostering a puppy for us recently. So I thought this would be a good question for you guys to answer. I want to hear first, I know what Laura's answer is. Tyler, Tyler, what's your answer? I think my answer is probably the same as Laura's. No. We don't really miss it that much. It was a, a puppy, and so puppies are really hard. You know, they take a lot of time, and they're very needy. So, uh, As that, well as the age difference, too. You're we still had two in the house. You're right. And what, Gatsby's just two? Three. 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 Oh, my Time flies when you're having fun. So you had that three-year gap. Right, we had the three-year gap, which was fine. But just the the where we were in our life, just that neediness was not wanted. And well, so when yeah. and it went away, we were like, ah. Puppies little, are a pain. Period. Puppies are a pain. Yeah. yeah. And it's but just they like grow a, out of that. Um, but you guys never got to that but point. But you didn't get no, to that point. No, we didn't get to that no, point. He like, was oh. just about to that point when – we got him yes. back from you guys. So thank you for that. Yeah, the, the owner probably is at that point right now. So. And he, um, you know, we our joke was that this is why puppies are made to be so cute uh, is because, you know, I think half of it was we already had two of our own dogs uh, that are um, independent and at the level where we don't have to expend as much energy. Sure. No, uh, older dogs, dogs that are like yeah. done and trained. Oh, it's so nice. And it's relaxing. Yeah. Each of our dogs have all, I mean, I'm counting the third, the puppy, have, we're all completely different dogs. And so, you know, we had Ellie, and we knew no different. You know, we had her 10 days when she escaped her first enclosure, and then it was just nonstop after that. And so, you know, that's what we thought GSP dog puppies sword. were like. And then Ooh. we got Gatsby, and I was like, this puppy is just Fabulous and fantastic, and the he most amazing. He never escaped his crazy no. We put the Even broken if the door was yeah, broken. We put the broken door on Gatsby's <laughs> kennel. Uh, this just was within the last few months, uh, and he didn't get out of it. Uh, so you know, we had that, and then you get this third puppy, and it added a totally different dynamic. And he uh, was super cute, but he. Uh, did not even require sleep. So, you know, it was, I enjoyed, um, I, I enjoy the part I like about um, hunting dogs. I'm more of the, the test person. And I think Tyler's more of the hunting person. And so I enjoyed working with him on um, kennel and uh, the obedience work, but he it was like a piranha. I mean, you talked about that earlier, but I, I miss his development. That's what I miss about having him is what he was going to go on and do because I could tell he was going to be a great companion um, for the family as well as hunting and testing. And so that's what I miss about sending him off is that I didn't get to continue that development. And see what he could have become. Right. That's really great. Ethan? Um, I think it's interesting. I want to touch on one thing that you mentioned as far as uh, adding the third dog changed the dynamic of the uh, We talked about that a lot, actually. Um, and I never believed Ethan before because he'd always <laughs> said adding a second dog's no big deal, but a third is like a game changer. And then you can go into four, five, six And it doesn't thing. matter. Yeah. Once you've already got And I was third. like, that makes zero sense to me <laughs> until we got the third dog. <laughs> there, there is not a lot of difference between one and two. This is very true. But uh, once you strike into that third one, you've created a pack and... That pack takes a whole different level of management. And then, like like she's saying, I always say, um, once you have three, you might as well have ten because it doesn't matter anymore. You've just got a pack of yeah. dogs. So yeah. And our two were not – it took them a while to accept the third. Yeah. Yeah. Something and that new. is also a question that gets asked a lot. So I would say as far as me personally, am, do I miss them when they leave? Um, 
I think maybe more to begin with, but we've been doing it long enough that it becomes a true understanding. I, I get almost excited for their send home and not because they're leaving, but because of, we get the opportunity to show mom and dad how much they've learned. All how, of their progress. Yeah, how much progress they've made and how good of a family and hunting companion they can be now. So I'm almost more excited for the send homes, but not maybe necessarily for the reason that some people would think. Yeah, it's definitely a nice culmination of all of our efforts and getting to see the progress that the dog has made and show that that can be handled by their owners. That's a really proud moment for, for us as well as we're proud of those parents, those puppy parents when they come out and they can handle their dog. Um, now I that love, we've I done love that big grin, right? So it's like yeah. Keelan and the dog's walking perfectly beside them and the leash, the and leash like, is loose is awesome. and they turn and look at you and their face is just... Yeah. And, and they're like, wow, this is, this I is never like night thought and this day. would be possible. Yes. So that is always a great feeling. Um, now there's always a few dogs that just work their way into my heart. Um, a lot of the, the time it's dogs that are from our puppy breeding program, but it's, also she's lying. It's always, uh, it's always a Brock France that works her way. Into <laughs> yeah. I, I bet it was say. Ellie. I bet it was Ellie. <laughs> you said Ellie home and you're super sad. I was super sad that I would never have to worry about her escaping again. Uh, but there's also other breeds and other dogs um, in the short hair breed that work their way into my heart when they're here, that they just have a cute personality that are just so much fun to work with, supernatural, um, that I do really love having and always tell their owners, hey, if they ever need to come in for a tune-up, I'd be happy to have them so that I could see them again um, and work with them again. So yes, I would say that I miss some of the dogs, um, but also I don't miss some of the dogs. Um, there are always some dogs that are a little bit harder to handle, a um, little bit needier in the kennel situation, Ellie, um, and you are ready for them to go home when they go home. Wait, so, was that? I'm not even going to make the joke. Um, so I heard a cough. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> We're too close together. Yeah. All right, I went there. Next. So um, I can leave. There's definitely <laughs> some dogs that I don't miss. Um, them going home. We still get as much as we can accomplished with those dogs, but not all dogs are necessarily created equal. Correct. So. Correct. Great question. Next question from Josh Judge on Facebook. As trainers, do you prefer a trailer or topper for transporting dogs? Sorry, mm. guys. We, um... <laughs> oh, wait. Trainer. You, you have an answer? I have an answer. Tyler oh, is yeah. like oh, I want to hear the answer. dream topper. I, I would go with a topper if I could. I have a company truck, so I can't get whatever I want. So get if I mind. had a personal truck, I would probably get a topper. Laura hates toppers. She would divorce me if I ever got <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. See, you're talking about like a camper shell topper, like hard shell over the... Or like no, the similar to what you yeah, used okay. to have. Yeah. A, a, so, a topper with, with two kennels in there. So the question, the question would be, too, that's a little confusing here. The box in the It's bag. actually considered a topper, and they make a dog box where the dogs load over the side. Oh, and it's a, it's a metal yeah, box. Yeah, that I, know so what you're I don't know like if this is what he's asking. Exactly, I don't know. I'm going to make an assumption here, and I'm going to say I don't think that's exactly what they're talking about. I think that they're mostly talking about having a trailer or having some type of system in, in the, the back of the, the truck, back. whether the it's a slide in like we have, a chassis mount maybe, um, an actual topper, or right. that topper that you've got. A fiberglass under. topper with right. that you yeah. can take the boxes out. Which we yeah. also used to have a system like that. We've, yeah. we've had almost all the systems. I mean, we used to train out of a chassis mount. Uh, we have had the slide in like we've got now. You had uh, a 16 dog trailer. We had a your big 12, tra hole, 12 hole dog trailer before. And mm -hmm. then we also have had the actual fiberglass topper shell with five hole box slide in, slide in underneath it. So we've kind of been there, done it all. Now, I will say over the years, I have come down to what is I, is going to work best we for us. We go back and forth a lot. Go back and forth a lot. But the the... Long and short of it is a trailer is very convenient for adding space and making travel easier on hunting trips because you've gone with me a couple times this last year and when yeah. we pack all that stuff in the truck with just the boxes, you run out of space quickly. Yeah, and you're going through weather and stuff like that, so you have to get stuff and dogs in boxes and it's cover. It's a pain. It, yeah, yeah it's it was, a pain. It was tough. So if you have the trailer... That adds a lot of ease to that aspect of things. Now, at the same time, that trailer 
makes it very difficult to get around in small places. Now, some people are better at backing trailers than others, and, you know, there's that. Not but, me. No, 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 no. Oh, you're fine. I hate it, though. I'm sh- just, I don't love it. But when, uh, like, when we were in Montana, if I'd had a trailer, we'd have left that truck and trailer in Montana. I yeah. mean, it was. It would have been stuck for days. Days. It was bad. The whole road was completely, I mean, check out our video. We, had, we did a whole video on the Montana trip, and you can see there's one clip in there that we like plow through this. Uh, it was one of those. It'd be like uh, uh, water, shallow water crossing right. areas where right. I mean, we drove through water to get through this. And there's no way that I'd uh, I'd have made it through the trailer. So there's definitely benefits to both. And what we have settled on. Well, and that's what I was gonna say. So we like the versatility that the trailer gives us for the use of the truck. Yep. But we also like the freedom from a trailer that a system in the back of the truck gives us. So there's kind of like we've been talking about a time and a place for each. Um, and the real uh, answer is to have one of all yep, of them. Have both. <laughs> yep. All of them. Which so is actually where we're, where at. we're at. Yeah. We have uh, a trailer now. Um, it's a smaller, no 12 hole anymore. No. It's a six hole, but it's got some closet and storage space, which is great because you can never have enough closet and storage space for all your training gear, hunting gear, Equipment. all the things. hundred percent. Oops, I just hit my microphone too. Check out the video of Ethan loading a, a his truck for his trip down to Texas, I think. Yeah, it's insane. And the whole it, thing's like packed to the yeah. max. Between all the hunting gear with, and then with the all this gear, gear too. Yeah. The video gear is ridiculous. There's almost yeah. more video gear than there is on hunting gear anymore. Right. Um, but then we have a slide in in the back. So where a majority of the places that we go, we can go and we can dump a trailer and then throw the dogs in the back of the truck to Double go Double up a couple the of them if we need to, yep. um, because all our dogs get along really well, so that's always an option for us. Now, if Peter, who anybody that's watched Channel before has uh, met Peter, he comes, hunts with us. Uh, he'd be my other hunting buddy, one of my other hunting buddies, and uh, the last hunting buddy will be on the show at some point in time. But the uh, when we go with him, I mean, his biggest thing is he hates trailers with a passion, absolutely hates trailers. He does not ever want a trailer to have dogs in because he's always afraid of somebody rear ending that trailer and ended up injuring a dog. Now, um, that's part of what went into picking this trailer that I have now. Um, the back about two and a half, three feet of that trailer is all storage space. So, um, worst case scenario or not worst case, but Hopefully, best case scenario, if we get rear-ended, it's going to kill my stuff, not my dogs. Yeah, but. and there's always a risk when you're traveling with dogs. Even if they're mm-hmm. in the back in a yeah. you know system like that, you roll over. Um, those There's always a risk to you, to your dogs, everything, when you are traveling, um, and you just try and be as safe as possible. Having quality equipment. This is where you know a lot of people I've heard say things about... Wire crates in the back of trucks. Are a horrible idea. Get, you know, even no. just even just those clamshells that you get from uh, Walmart, Tractor Supply, any of those those things are cheap. They just crack they and destroy. Into a million if you pieces. want it at the house, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're going to be traveling with them, expect you know expect for the worst so that you're prepared for that, and then um, everything's going to be better. We talk about like we have um, and have used uh, Lucky Kennels crates. They're uh, a really durable unit, and um, your dogs got a much better chance than that than they do in a, a, especially a wire crate or even those crappy plastic clamshells. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, those were some great questions. I think that was a great end to our part three of this week's Yawa. That's it? We're already at 24 minutes. That's it. Wow. If I ask another one, I'll get dirty looks from Ethan anyway. So <laughs> we got to cut it off. Guys, thanks everybody for watching. We appreciate all, you, all y'all all y'all that subscribe. This is why he can't talk. Everybody. Everybody. We appreciate all, y- all y'all. Um, This is the end of our You Ask, We Answer for the week. I am the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the Dog Trainer. I'm Laura. I'm Tyler. Average Tyler. Yeah, and this was the end of our pros versus average Average Joes. Joes. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We will catch you next time. See ya.